Welcome to Nevertheless Weekly Podcast by Bidemi Mark Modi, a podcast dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you will discover how to discern your purpose and live powerful. Hello, welcome to Nevertheless, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. My name is Bidemi Makmodi. Did you miss me? Sorry, we didn't have a brand new episode last week. Um, it's for a good cause, I can promise you. If you remember the last episode um, that we aired, I was talking about uh, Kingdom Man Conference and my husband was hosting the Kingdom Man Conference. And so um, all of last week was really busy, preparatory to the conference. I come back to give praise and glory to God today that the conference went excellently well. Men came, they were blessed, their lives were touched and we are already getting um, some loads of feedback and we're trusting that God will take everything that he started last Saturday in the lives of the men that came and complete it to the glory of his name. So on today's episode, what will we be talking about? Are you frustrated and tired of life? Do you feel trapped in life's maze and don't seem to find your way? Or are you passionate about your purpose and destiny and want to find out more? Then get a copy of DNA. DNA, Destiny Navigational Application, is a book written by Bidemi Modi, where she coaches you to distill the answer to the cry of purpose, mandate, and significance. She teaches you how to discern your essence, discover your God-given mandate, deploy power, and demonstrate dominion. Get a copy of Destiny Navigational Application from any bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmodi.com to place your order now. I'm struggling with a title for this episode, but I'm sure that by the time we're done, we'll find a, t- a title. The meat or the focus of today's episode, however, is how not to allow the details get in the way of our living a life of purpose. Because I've heard a lot of people say, okay, now I know that, let's say for instance, now I know that I'm supposed to be the one who flies to the moon. However, how do I do it? A lot of us are too enamored by the how. That somehow we never get anything done. Now someone will be saying, does that mean I don't need to know what I'm, how I'm supposed to do it? No. Can I just take two steps back and let us know that the what is usually more important than the how. The what is always more important than the how. The what is always more important than, than the how. I, I, I had to um, repeat that over and over again because I need you to get it. You need to understand, every one of us needs to understand that when God calls a man or when God ordains for a man to walk in purpose, remember that this ordination is of God and he's the one that determines what it is that he wants us to do. Once you are clear what it is that God wants you to do, then it is almost counterproductive to begin to think how you will get it done. Am I making sense? Maybe I'll explain and I'll explain trying to use somebody, uh, you know, maybe a few analogies or illustrations here and there. But before we go into the details of what this means, I'll be right back. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life's just simple. Don't worry, you're not alone on this life's journey as Bidemi shares powerful insight and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless from a bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883. Or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmodi.com to place your order now. I guarantee you, you will make it nevertheless. Hi, 
This is Tina Nevertheless, and this is a show for organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. So I was talking to you about how sometimes we allow the details to stop us from living a life of purpose. Everybody wants to know how they need to get it done. On the other spectrum is a group of people who already have a how. So they pick that how and it becomes a template for everything that God has or everything that they want to do. I want to put it out here today that purpose is not the same thing as being good at something. You can be good at something, you can excel, you can succeed concerning so many things, but they may end up not being what God has called you to do. However, those so many things that you know how to do usually have an impact or a part to play in the final thing that you are called to do. Now, I have found out, first was from scripture that the Bible says, a part of the righteous shine brighter daily, no, from day to day, from glory to glory. That is daily, the light, the path shines and it becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. I have seen it in my life, 15 years and over 15 years of living a life of purpose. Purposefully, oh, actually over 18 years of trying to live my life by what God has called me, by design and how God has called me. Honestly, there, I have never had the full picture. I wish it was that easy. I wish I had the full picture. Then I'll probably be able to find shortcuts. But I, one of the reasons I think that we don't know the details nine times out of ten is because we might be tempted to take shortcuts. And if you know anything about God, there are no shortcuts. I tell my team a lot every time that the process you don't go through means you cannot distill a technology to hand to the next person. So we thrive by the technologies that we distill. And we distill technologies by the processes that we go through. And if God showed us a template from start to finish, then we don't need those technologies anymore. So sometimes he keeps the details under the wraps and he lets us go one step after the other so that we can learn the process and apprehend them to the extent that we're able to teach other people. But beyond that, I think that the reason why God, the details are in God's hands is because God uses the process to teach us how to trust him we just came out of the kingdom man conference a week before that we had the sister power gathering and it's you know somebody actually jokingly said to me last week that it looks like your life is not just all for events this weekend um in abuja another sister power gathering so it looks like you're constantly doing one thing after the other and people actually think that you now have it under your belt you understand it you know how to do it yes i may know the processes i may have an idea how but do you know that every single one of the meetings whether a sister power gathering, whether a Ross conference, whether a kingdom man that we had con- convened every single one of them, one thing I have realized is that God uses a different template every time and I think it's because like I said he wants us to learn how to trust him he wants us to know that he has the details, he wants us to be our confidence he wants to be our dependability he wants to be the one we rely upon I love the story in the book of Ezekiel. When Ezekiel, the spirit of the Lord took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. And he opened Ezekiel's eyes to see all the bones of dead people that have dried up and they were there. And he said to Ezekiel, he said, but shall these bones live again? And Ezekiel took one look at it and said, only thou knowest. Can I quickly tell you that when it comes to your a life of purpose, only God knoweth. Your responsibility is just to take one step after the other. Let God hold your hands. Let him teach you. Let him take you to the places that he wants to take you. By the time we were done with Kingdom Man on Saturday and by Sunday before our guest ministers went back, the events that unfold made me see God in another dimension. He's a multifaceted God. What that means is you don't expect that because you saw him in one way last year, you will see him that exact same way this year. The point of Today's podcast is we need to learn how to trust God. Trust God. In his book, Visioneering, um, the man, you know, and Stanley said something. He said, how is never a problem with God. When he puts something in your heart to do, he goes to work behind the scenes to ensure that it happens. In the meantime, we have to remain faithful to him and focus on the vision. One person in the Bible whose life I saw, 
exemplified vision and purpose and an ability to trust God is the man Nehemiah. Nehemiah had been taken away um, captive or into slavery to Babylon along with his, a lot of um, Jewish people. And they, he had been in Babylon in captivity for so long that he had risen through the ranks to become the, the king's taster. Now, I was sharing with someone that Nehemiah at this, in this position and at this time had a good life. Even though he was a slave, he was a pretty important slave. He was a slave the king couldn't do without because he had to taste everything that the king would eat. What that meant is the king couldn't eat except Nehemiah had tasted the drink. I, in my mind, I'm looking at it and I'm saying that means that Nehemiah's living quarters would be just probably next door to the king's kitchen or dining room. The king does not have to look for Nehemiah. If I was a slave and I already live this close to the palace or I live within the palace, why do I want to go back to a Jerusalem with broken down walls? I don't want to go there. But you see, from the foundation, from as far back as Genesis, I think chapter 12 or 13, God actually spoke to Abraham and told Abraham that his descendants will be taken into captivity. So this slavery had been foretold. And what that meant was that even at the point that God was telling Abraham, another thing that automatically follows is that God also had ordained the person who would help to build back the walls of broken down the broken down walls of Jerusalem when it was time for the Jews to go back home when their years in captivity were done and it was Nehemiah that God gave that assignment Nehemiah was not the only Jew in slavery at this point Nehemiah was not the only one who had this or feedback that the walls of Jerusalem were broken down but only Nehemiah prayed about Jerusalem. Only Nehemiah worried about Jerusalem. Only Nehemiah was passionate about a rebuilding of Jerusalem. Why? Because he had read it in the scrolls. And he saw somewhere that the walls would be built, rebuilt after 70 years in Babylon. And they were already beyond 70 years in Babylon. So Nehemiah was, he had something in his heart. And that is what I call the word. Nehemiah had apprehended. He understood the word. He knew that God had called him to do this one thing, which was very simple. Make sure that the walls of Jerusalem are built up. Nehemiah had no way to understand or recognize how he was going to do it. I mean, he was a slave. He needed lumber. He needed all kinds of things. He even needed a permit to be able to leave where he was to go back to Jerusalem. He needed a permit to be allowed to cross through one from one boundary to the other, which was like a, in, in today's parlance, a visa. So Nehemiah the slave was never going to be able to get that. Which was why the Bible said that Nehemiah went back to God and prayed. When you recognize what it is that God has called you to do, because the what is the big thing, and you know you are the person which takes care of the who, the next thing you want to be sure you are doing is do is what? You want to be sure that you go back to God and get in the flow and begin to ask him, what is the first step that I should take? So the more Nehemiah prayed, he declared a fast. The more he declared a fast for himself. And he started to pray, Lord, give me the opportunity to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He came into the king's um, presence one day. And the, king's not the king noticed that his countenance had fallen. That he was sad. Now this, I, used, I, I like to point this out to you. That in those days, slaves were not allowed to be sad in the presence of the king. Usually that will earn a slave a beheading. But Nehemiah was sad. Maybe he didn't even know. Maybe it was the intense meditation on going to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. But the king noticed and said to Nehemiah, there's something about you. Is there a problem? Is there something I can do? And in that conversation, Nehemiah told the king, Oh yes, you know, I hear that the walls of Jerusalem, my home you know is have been broken down and you know i have this urge and desire in my heart to go and rebuild them that was all that nehemiah needed to say if nehemiah had been going around trying to steal lumber from the palace or try, trying to steal some of the king's supplies so that he can pass them through the back door to take to jerusalem he would have died all that Nehemiah needed to do was to say to God, give me the opportunity. Let me find favor and I will go and rebuke this. 
So when you find out what you're supposed to do, take two steps back and go right back to God. He's told you, I know you are excited, but don't move until he's told you or he's giving you the green light. Because what happens is a lot of us, because they don't know what it is that they're supposed to be, or how they are supposed to go about living a life of, of purpose, actually stop or freeze from going. And then they begin to go around in circles. But I'm saying that if you trust God enough, he will work out the details for you. By the time Nehemiah shared with the king, the king went on to say, oh, is that the case? Okay, I'll give you a letter. I know you can go. No, the king first of all gave him the permission. How long do you need to go and rebuild? And he said, oh, I'll need so so, so number of months. And the king said, okay, that's fine. You can go. This is Nehemiah, the king's taster. That meant that someone had to step up to his plate. But the king was willing to let him go. That was the first detail that needed to be worked out. Because imagine, remember that even if Nehemiah had all the lumber, the same way you have all the skills that you need to do what God has called you to, except you know what God wants you to do first, you may deploy your skills and still not get the results that God wants you to get. So the first thing that Nehemiah needed was not to gather people in Jerusalem and say, oh, we need to build the wall. He needed permission to be able to leave the palace. And only the king could grant that. And Nehemiah did not have the guts to go to the king by himself to say, I want to leave. But God worked it out in such a way that he could present himself before the king. And the king gave him permission to go. And immediately the king gave him that permission. Things began to come together for Nehemiah. Nehemiah now knew that if the king had given him the permission to go, he could actually come back to the king to say, talk to your provinces, let them give me lumber, let them give me wood, let them give me all the uh, uh, material that I will need to rebuild the wall. And Nehemiah went and to the king. And the king did not only just give him the letter, the king actually, I think, gave him his signet ring, you know, so that, you know, um, stamped the documents with his signet rings so that Nehemiah would not have anyone stop him. Because once they see a document that has the king's signet ring on it, it means that whoever it was comes in the power of the king, in the authority of the king. So Nehemiah could go to the provinces and their rulers and say, the king said, give me 60, 60 whatever tons of lumber. I don't know what it was, but he got everything that he needed. And Nehemiah made it to Jerusalem. What am I saying? What's this podcast about? I'm saying that God works out our details. I'll be right back. Are you frustrated and tired of life? Do you feel trapped in life's maze and don't seem to find your way? Or are you passionate about your purpose and destiny and want to find out more? Then get a copy of DNA. DNA, Destiny Navigational Application, is a book written by Bidemi Modi, where she coaches you to distill the answer to the cry of purpose, mandate, and significance. She teaches you how to descend your essence, discover your God-given mandate, deploy power, and demonstrate dominion. Get a copy of Destiny Navigational Application from any bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bdemi at bdemimacmodi.com to place your order now. Welcome back. If you've been following... You know that by now, Nehemiah had made it to Jerusalem. The lumber, he had received permission from the king to go. The lumber and all the other building things that he needed had been given by the provinces. And Nehemiah was in Jerusalem. But when Nehemiah got into Jerusalem, because he had lived out of the city for so long, Nehemiah did not even have a constituency. So Nehemiah had to begin talks. But you know, see, if Nehemiah had never gotten the opportunity to go, there was no way he would have been able to have the kind of talks that he had with the the the, the, the um, what I'll call the elders or the leaders in Jerusalem at the point to say we needed to build because it was one major tax to rebuild those walls. As a matter of fact, if you read the book of Nehemiah, you'll find that at some point they were so afraid, the people that were rebuilding the walls were so um, determined and 
that they, they were ready to build with one hand and hold weapons of warfare in the other hand so that they can wait off this, um, distractions and all those things so they could get the work done. Again, six months prior to the beginning of the building, there was no way Nehemiah would have been able to hold that solemn assembly in Jerusalem to say, look, our walls are falling down. This is what the scrolls say. This is the time to build from where he was at. But God worked the details out for him and he got to where he needed to go. I want to show you another example. Also in the Bible, this you'll find in Genesis, I think 26, is the story of Isaac. After Isaac, you know, a father died and Isaac took over from Abraham. Isaac went, a famine hit, a famine hit again, you know, and Isaac went to Gera. He went to Gera. You know, back to where, you know, his father had built a well before and had settled before. Isaac went back there. And, and while he was there, he was contemplating going to Egypt. And God came to him and said to him, Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay right where you are. And the Bible said that Isaac sold in that land and he reaped a hundredfold. God is in the details. Remember there was a famine in his father's time and his father ran. To Egypt and out of that trip by the time Abraham was coming back they came back with Hagar automatically they came back with Ishmael automatically they came back with the children of the bondwoman I'm saying that when you don't allow God to work the details for you you can get in trouble two things can happen one you may not even move at all or you may begin to move and actually be making progress only that you're not working according to God's template in my life in ministry and all the things that God has called me to, I've had to go back every time to say to God, what do you want me to do? How would you have me do it? And then by himself, he will just draw the, the picture and I, so that I can follow his pattern. When they needed to build the tabernacle in the days of Moses, God gave the pattern. When Noah needed to build the ark, God gave the pattern, the measurement. Everything was given by God. God's responsibility is the details. Your responsibility is to be available. What I'm trying to say to you is don't never allow your inability to know what the next step would be. Rob you of taking the step you already know. God is the one who works out the details for living a life of purpose. He's called you to build a university, but the details are in his hand. You can't build a university today, but you can begin to teach the children in your church. It begins from there, really small, I know, but the Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. One of my team members was telling me how God has called him to a worship ministry. And he had been thinking that, oh, he needed to rent a huge venue, fill the hall, you know, look for big speakers, and that's, you know, before he can have an event. And this last, this month, the Lord came to him and said to him, just go and start with your wife and two children in your living room. And so this day, you know, in the last four weeks or so, every Friday, himself, his wife, and whoever would care to join them, they have a worship to God, a worship altar before God. Now, it's small. Maybe nobody else but myself know about it, and because I'm sharing, you know about it. But that is the seed of greatness and that's how it begins so rather than be so carried away be with working out with de the details why don't you just take a step and trust god because let me tell you all those things that you're trying to do you know all the planning that we try to do because we want it to be perfect speak volumes about how much we don't trust god if you trust god you will go moses got to the edge of the red sea before get god said to him strike with your rod Joshua got to the edge of the Jordan before God said to him, let the, let the Levites who are carrying the ark step in. And the moment they stepped in, Jordan rose in a heap. I also want to quickly remind you that everything that is God ordained is usually so much bigger than us. That if we even understood the magnitude and the details, we may not either not do it or have a heart attack just trying to understand it. So God also gives to us in bits and pieces. So that we can live for him. And so that when we are done, when people come to us and say, well done, you can quickly give the glory back to God. Because living a life of possibles is so that you can give glory to God.
In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life's just simple. Don't worry, you're not alone on this life's journey as BDME shares powerful insights and principles from our everyday work and life experiences in our book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless from a bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bdme at bdmemarkmodi.com to place your order now. I guarantee you, you will make it Nevertheless. Welcome back. I want to stop here, but I want to quickly backtrack and do a short summary of what it is that I have said today. I have said that you should not allow the inability to understand the details or see the details stop you from stepping out in what God has called you to do. I have told you that it is your responsibility to make yourself available, but it's God's responsibility to work out the details. I have mentioned here that when you allow God to work out the details, he does it even better than you could ever have worked it out by yourself. When you allow God to work the details, then he helps build your ability to trust him and be confident in him who has called you. I have also told you that when you do your best to work out the details before you get to the next Red Sea, then you are actually announcing without saying anything that you don't trust God. God's responsibility is the detail. Your responsibility is to understand, know the what, and step out. So should you be out there listening to me today, and you know what God wants you to do, but the how is the thing, reason why you have not stepped out. I want you to take two steps back. After you have prayed to God and he's giving you peace, do the easiest thing that you can do. And I can guarantee you that God will come forth and he will work out every other thing. Check out Joseph. Check out Daniel. Just check out the many men and women of God who did great exploits for God. They had to trust God per second. Will you trust God today that he knows what he's doing? Will you submit to him that his plans towards you are good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope and to bring you to an expected end? It doesn't matter what you face today. Maybe it's even an Ill, an ailment and you're wondering, will I ever be able to? God is working out the details. You may think that a particular doctor is the one that will heal you. But it may just be that God has another plan entirely. One thing I can tell you is that whatever the God, Lord do it, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I believe, I think it's verse 11 or so, or 13, whatever the Lord do it, is good none can add to it and none can take away from it till next week when i'll come your way again this has been nevertheless a show dedicated to organic leaders and leader perennials discover purpose and live powerful god bless you Thank you for listening to today's podcast by Bidemi Mark Modi. We would love to hear from you. For more information and resources, visit www.bidemimarkmodi.com. Don't forget, when you discover your purpose, you will live a powerful life.